We need to stop this forced indoctrination of our students by mandating that every child uh, you know, says the Pledge of Allegiance every morning. Regardless of how one feels about gender, it is a scientific fact that there are two human sexes, male or female. If the LGBT community has the right to display their flags in the public schools, then so do people who want to display straight flags, boy flags, girl flags, furry flags, and the multitude of other flags that would need to be displayed so all groups are represented and feel included. I'm the regional director for the Anti-Defamation League's Philadelphia Regional Office. When Policy 321 was being considered, we caution that this overbroad policy could lead to censorship. One example of this occurred two weeks ago before Holocaust Remembrance Day when a librarian was told to take down a well-known quote from Elie Wiesel, a noted author, Nobel laureate, and Holocaust survivor. And it's not just me. Many other students no longer feel safe in the schools thanks to the fact that you ban pride flags, despite every ounce of evidence proving that they do nothing to harm our students, but in fact can actually save a student's life. Just that little bit of representation can make a kid feel supported and can prevent them from mental stress and breakdown. You ban them claiming that you wanted the school to be a neutral place, despite knowing full well uh, that there is nothing political or non-neutral about showing support for a minority. To the woman who spoke about reading and, and black authors, I have three great books. The first one is Beaten Black and Blue by Brandon Tatum. Another one is Blackout by Candace Owens. And a third is Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins, a Navy SEAL black man. Um, regarding the pornographic books in the school library, my first question is why? Why, you know, isn't there a sign on the door of every adult bookstore that says no admittance under the age of 18? I'm here today because uh, you know, I'm very concerned about the books that uh, our children are seeing. That there's uh, you know, this indoctrination. There's, uh, the other day I saw a children's book where two male penguins were holding hands. Can you believe that? They're just holding hands. It's crazy. Uh, the other, I, there's a book called um, The Giving Tree, where this uh, tree uh, gives the child you know, whatever it wants and needs. We have clear reference to communism. Uh, you know, I'm worried about our democracy and you know the foundation of our democracy. Now, if you look in history, you know, democracy, the concept of it was created in ancient Greece. Okay, and now in ancient Greece, you know they uh, they created this concept of democracy. Did they, did they have a pride flag? No, they didn't have a pride flag because um, you know uh, men being with other men, I guess, was normalized and it's. Uh, just live everywhere. Okay, where am I going with this? Where am I going with this? All right. Oh, you know what? You know what? Uh, forget that point. Uh, you know what? Uh, you know, and you know, we should also ban uh, books about ancient Greece in this library as well. No more. I don't want to see another book on ancient Greece. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I think you know we need to protect uh, freedom and liberty, uh, democracy, and freedom of speech. And the way we do that is by banning pride flags banning books in schools, uh, you know, you, not allowing people to say the word gay. I uh, want, you know, we get like a schedule, you know, the women need to report their menstrual cycles, all that. And just so we can, um, we can, uh, you know, preserve, you know, our wonderful democracy, you know, and we need to stop this forced indoctrination of our students by mandating that every child, uh, you know, says the Pledge of Allegiance every morning. Okay, we you know, take down the pride flag, I want to put up um, the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence. The Declaration of Independence, kids should know about that because it's not just a piece of paper. It's a map that leads to a treasure of Templar gold. And that is why Nicolas Cage tried to steal it. Right? And you know, as we, uh, you know, these liberals try to steal our Constitution, the only way to stop them is for us to steal it first. <laughs> Thank you. That was a hard, hard act to swallow. Okay. 
Um, all right. Like a Trojan horse, you have allowed extremist entrance into our school. How is it possible that an anti-LGBTQ Christian nationalist group designated as a hate group by the Southern Poverty Law Center is ghostwriting our library policy regulation by your invitation? Or how our now third legal counsel, Independence Law Center, whose mission statement is that, quote, marriage is between one man and one woman to align with God's design for sexuality, unquote. What a sham after the song and dance of neutrality you have put on. The students are all crying out loud to you. Please consider the repercussions Policy 321 has. And remember that we are all not just members of Bucks County, but we are members of the world. As a taxpayer, I want to know how this board and administration have the right to spend my tax dollars on a PR firm to promote policies that demean segments of the student population. The effort by the board majority to use new policies to isolate and minimize LGBTQ plus students and the staff that support them flies in the face of the, this value. I find it peculiar and disheartening that the nominally conservative board majority has contracted a PR firm at the rate of $15,000 a month, a run rate of $180,000 per year to gild their ugly lily. In December alone, they paid out $114,000 to defend themselves against a Federal investigation about discrimination in our schools generated by the majority's misguided policy. Most of these kids are not out with their family members, so they cannot advocate for themselves. They silently look to the adults. They view the actions of Dr. Mukaba and the board majority as punching down on them when they have no way of defending themselves or advocating for themselves. It is viewed as board-approved bullying and a board that is not interested in representing all students. No one in this room wants to see articles written about Central Bucks being a school that stifles freedom of expression. Unfortunately, articles like this will continue to be written, though, as long as Policy 321 is in effect. Here are just some of the renowned books the policy may ban from high schools for containing explicit written descriptions of sexual acts. Slaughterhouse-Five, Siddhartha, Ulysses, The Kite Runner, Catch-22, Native Son, and The Handmaid's Tale. I'm a junior at CB West. An assumption made by Policy 321 was that America is neutral about which people are valued most and treated best. It assumes that an absence of change from current America is neutral. However, neutrality is not our default. There are still threats to LGBTQ rights in our government. Now the argument that, well, we allow a flag to be put there from LGBTQ, what about the, maybe a Confederate flag or a Nazi flag or something? Well, it's not the same thing. They, they don't hurt you, the LGBT. They're, they're just like the rest of us. Policy 321 is about dismantling public education as we know it until all that is left is the neutral breeding ground for fascism, hate, and discrimination. The quote from Elie Wiesel, neutrality helps the oppressor, never the victim, from his award acceptance speech, I take this quote to heart. The fact that the board asked for this quote to be removed, and although it was put back up, it was removed. It's disgusting. This many students asking you to change the damage that you are causing is not normal. I am disappointed in not only the actions our school board keeps making, but the lack of concern you have towards student, the students' well-beings and their mental health. This constant, ah! this constant name calling comes from a group that represents the Democrat Party. They claim it's not political, but if it's not political, why would a former Tea Party school board member who vehemently opposed Obama turn tail and change their political affiliation from, from Republican to Democrat once their children came out as gay and bisexual, respectively? 